What's it? OccupyUprising.org. Um, I've taken a lot of pictures. I've written stories about Blink-182 concerts to Russell Pierce debates. Like, I'm pretty well-rounded. And so I just wanted to kind of have a discussion about the importance the media plays in what we call a democracy here in America. And not just, you know, the news media, but also mainstream media, at, you know, movies, television shows, and all that, and how it really, in this country, controls us. And so I'd like to open with um, talking about the news. And Fox News, any thoughts? Like, I want this to be a conversation. That's Please not news. Huh? That's not news. Is that Murdoch? Fox News Entertainment. Rupert, like, exactly, Fox News Entertainment. They were forced by the... Well, no, I, just, I don't see much difference between Fox News and CNN and MSNBC. They all have their own. NBC. And NBC. They, they do. Well, they, know, but they, they, all, they all have their own. They're, they're, they're trying to they're push. They're just they a do. little bit worse. They're all trying to sell advertising. Right. It's a business. But the they point that, model. The they're point Mike just made was the exact point I was going to try and get at really slowly is talk about all the news sources and how essentially they're all pushing their own agenda. Fox News just happens to be more apt like to bold face lies. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, everybody out here is also trying to push their own agenda, but I think it's important to realize that the corporations which we believe are controlling our government are also colluding with our media, sure. which is why our government's been able to hide so many things. Sure. There's a reason why freedom of the press is in the Bill of Rights, because it's very, very important that the government doesn't step in and try to stifle your media. Because if anybody's read 1984, which we're reading in book club, all of you should come to the next <laughs> meeting, 5 p.m. on Grand oh, Ave. That would be the Indie Art House, uh, 1504 Grand Avenue. We'll see you guys there. Very fun. But, um, yeah. Hey, buy Walmart. <laughs> Vote for him. Vote Moses in 2012. Write me in. I'm running. Just uh, make sure you know the spelling of buy. That's M O S E S. <laughs> I think he That's was uh, saying buy. goodbye, not uh, buy his stuff. But anyway, so with, with mainstream media and control, I mean, think about it. You watch the news, any news. You get to watch the news for what, 10 minutes before you get a commercial? What, what's standard time these days eight. before a commercial pops up? Eight, eight minutes and then you get a commercial? Yeah. And so it's just your news being fed to yeah. you with horrible things are blowing up. Um, there's a war going on. Lock up your doors because your kids might get kidnapped. Buy at Walmart, buy McDonald's. By KFC. Let's get back into the news. There's some sports going on. TMZ. You, and, TMZ. Occasionally, <laughs> and, and occasionally yeah. there's an environmental problem. Yeah. <laughs> you have to see what they're feeding you and really open your mind to uh, alternative sites. And that's to that kind of transition into citizens. something they can't cover up. Russia Today. Well, yeah, Russia Today, Ali Jazeera. There are still some good big ones out there, but I'm saying we need to just like Indie start media. looking at huh? IndieMedia.org. But we also need to start looking into local media. I was actually told about that. And citizen yeah. journalists. I don't think anything could be more important to this movement than the, the citizen local. journalists. That's how this movement got national notoriety. People like Oak for Show out in Oakland, Global Revolution Channel, Occupy Unity, all those things we get really excited when they come on our live stream. Those are just some guy like us. And so anybody who has a smartphone, you're a citizen journalist. You have everything you need to cover this movement the way it needs to be covered. I think that's like important to remember too that the people on these newscasts are just some guy. They're just yeah. like when when I play poker tournaments, I'm a little bit behind the scenes and like you know ESPN stuff. It's just some guy doing it. They screw up. They're on shaky ground. They make mistakes. These are the people that are running the news. It's just the same as if you were to run it or I were to run it. They're very influential and they're there, but they can be influenced just as easy from people at the top of corporations or from us, which is why they give us so little coverage or in some cases so much coverage. It's because they do what they're told because somebody <laughs> told them to do it, which can be us. The media is a mouthpiece. It just, it, what, all that changes is the person that's using it. And if you're watching Fox News, it's the right wing and the conservative and the Republicans. If you watch CNN, it's the opposite. If you watch Al Jazeera, it's people who aren't too you know, stoked on on the Western way of life. And, you know, that's not to say one's better than the other because it's all slanted one way or another. And I don't think it's necessarily the duty of the media to give you everything as unbiased as possible because that that's impossible in and of itself. But it's the duty of the consumer to realize that what you're getting is slanted and to analyze it and think about it for yourself. Because if you accept anything on the topical level without questioning it first through your own mind, then you're allowing them to take hold of your mind. I think I think it's both. 
I think it's I think it's a 50-50. Oh, yeah. I don't know. That's how I like to I don't like to say <laughs> one more than the other. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, like, I would I would agree with that because I think there's there's a certain objectivity that a journalist should have definitely. I, I I just like putting the emphasis on the consumer because you can't control the media, but you can control the way you consume the media. Sure. At the what? same time, I'd corporations own 95% yeah. of yeah. the big media, so in a corporation's goal is to do everything and anything for profit. So a lot of the news is, you know, it's to sell ads. Exactly. To sell you something. So, and that's why, like, even CNN, and I mean, it's, I watched it's gone to shit. It's like TMZ where they're trying to sell you something later on. You and know, to hop on what he's saying, it's, it's for-profit media, which guess what? That's, that's as bad as for-profit education, for-profit healthcare, for-profit anything that we don't want to be for profit. Our media is what is telling us what's going on in the world. And me personally, I've been questioning it for years now, whether or not things are true. And I mean, I question whether or not there actually is an Afghanistan. I ain't never been there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, obviously I'm joking, but to go back yeah, to 1984 yes. once again, you know, they, they had their made-up war, and it would seem to me we're fighting our made-up war right now. I, I, and see, I like the 1984 analogy, but I've always argued the Huxley version, and it's like, it's not so much 1984 as it is Brave New World, because what they're feeding us is not, it is the war, and it is, you know, all this other processed food, and they're, they're feeding everything to us, but in, yeah. But in our modern society, if you look at it, they're not oppressing us to death. Well, they are, but they're entertaining us to death, yeah. which is how they oppress us. Yeah. Well, that, that's what the media is. I've been thinking that, honestly, our government read Brave New World, they read 1984, and they said, oh, we put these two together, we cannot be stopped. It's true. <laughs> it's, both, it's both sides at the same point. One of the things I keep bringing up is in 1984, and this is all a discussion in media. Don't forget, print journalism, print, print books, novels, this is all media. Um, 1984, uh, Winston had a razor blade, and he had a couple razor blades, but he didn't want to share because razor blades were like really, really rare to get in, in that world. So he wouldn't give his own neighbor a razor blade. Whereas here, I go right over there, I get five million razor blades if I want. We have, we're killed with our stuff. Our stuff consumes us to death. While they keep telling us, be afraid, be very afraid. That's why you need more stuff. Be afraid so you buy stuff. And the, the thing that, like there, it was a razor blade. The thing we don't want to share are, you know, not us, per se, but in general is our ideas, yeah. like our intellectual knowledge. We like protect that so fiercely now. Like we've been told to protect that because that could be monetarily valuable. And that I feel is really helpful here is that I don't see that happening as much. What? You know, protecting, you know, our ideas instead of using them in a group to help the group, you know, well, instead of ourselves. Ideas. Yeah, yeah. This, this is the point uh, that I'm glad you guys brought up because this is why I'm here. This is why I was so glad that you guys still have an occupation or still having GAs, because there are ideas from all these different occupations, from all over the nation, from all over the world, that people are finally coming together to discuss. And these GAs, this occupation, the Occupy movement is a forum that scares the government precisely because it shares ideas. The ideas aren't coming from there. They're not coming from the media. They're not coming from what they're feeding you. There's people organically talking about issues that are very real to them, that have a very real impact and have implications that could revolutionize the way we live for the positive, which takes them out of power, right. which is why this whole movement is so dangerous to them. Because these are ideas and you can't kill ideas. And that's what they're trying to do to this movie. They're trying to separate us and squash us so that we don't talk and we don't communicate. And I think these GAs are, and the occupations are the first step in that. They brought people to this discussion yep. that for so many years has been you know, squashed. That's why people sit yeah. in their cars <laughs> and listen to the radio to eat lunch. That's why they sit at home at night and eat dinner in front of the TV. Because there's one person one group of people that is feeding them all that at the same time. They're controlling all these different outlets. And so when you have these discussions, you're creating that for yourself. And that's dangerous because you don't want people thinking for themselves. At the same time, when they stamp out our you know, free expression, they have their free expression in Alec member meetings where they get together and they think out their ideas on how to right. screw us and so that we don't think of our own ideas on how to fight back. They have board meetings, why can't we? Yeah, they have they have their meetings. And we're not allowed and, to be at them. And we're not allowed <laughs> to have ours to combat that. Because they I, don't want that. It may, I mean it makes perfect sense. They are 
the difference is, I think, we represent more people. I honestly believe that we are more of a voice of the people than they are. And that's why it's scary too, because how many people like can't be here that would love to be here, I think, in a way. And, and also on that point about suppressing this idea, we just had some guy get out of jail today that I picked up, and he said that the people in the jail, the guards, they said the same thing, that they're actually gonna try to go after us, kind of, because of that. <laughs> Because of that very reason of worth, I don't know. He I think said, it's also important to well, remember well, well, what the yeah. media and not not to scare people, but that's I mean they're like deliberately they know who we are. I mean when you go into the court system, they know you're from Occupy. You know they know they're all on alert. I think they might play dumb, but they're not. To uh, drag this back to media, I think it's important to remember what um, what things our government chooses to invite the media to. I highly doubt there were any members of the media inside of the ALEC conference at the Kierland, but to go watch Jan Brewer give her state of the state address, which even uh, Democratic Majority Leader Shapira said was rather, uh, what did he say exactly? He said she was full of shit off camera. Um, she was. We got one senator on camera to admit that she straight up lied about the budget. <laughs> yeah, that was Senator Hale. Senator Hale said that she lied about the budget. And so the media doesn't cover that. The media is only going to cover that Senator Brewer or that Governor Brewer said that the budget is balanced. Whereas a guerrilla journalist myself had to go up to Hale to get the true story about it. Um, and, and also with citizen journalism, I think it's important all of you with smartphones, like the police can't arrest you for putting a camera in their face. They can threaten it all they want. And you know what? If they do, you get to fight it on constitutional grounds all day. But that's something that I think here, especially in Occupy Phoenix, I haven't seen much of. We gotta be putting cameras in people's faces and making them uncomfortable. Cops do not want cameras around. You gotta, I got you. You gotta film the police. And also, Tips pointed out that us as guerrilla journalists <laughs> and us as citizen journalists, we can point out who the good cops are also. Right. We were over there at, uh, at the Indy Art House and two guys were, uh, the cops rolled up on these two guys that were clearly a little, um, you know, drunk or whatever they were on. And the cop was actually being rather personable until we saw more cops roll up. We don't really know what happened after that. But the point is, like, when you film the cops, that also shows which cops do their jobs and which cops are just out there to try and hurt people. And, and this is sort of a, a shout out to Occupy, uh, Occupy Salt Lake City. They've had great success in working with their police because they're lucky enough to have a police commissioner that cares about them and that understands the movement. And they've been able to work with them in secure spaces and secure permits. But the other half of that is, you know, you know, and that's sort of it aside. But the media and the citizen journalism is great because it allows for us to put that out ourselves, but at that same time, it's a double-edged sword because they do know who we are because we put it out there. Yeah. And so you have to be aware that, you know, by making these videos, by coming to these meetings, you are making a conscious decision to make your face known, to make your voice heard. <laughs> but you have to know that by making your voice heard, you are threatening the status quo. Yes. Simply by having ideas, simply by discussing it, simply by being here. Which is why we need more people. <laughs> like, cause the more of this, of of, a mo the more of us that there are, the harder it is to suppress it. The the, the good thing is, like, I, like I I really truly believe that this this, or it will be, but this is felt by many many people in some sort of way, and it's just drawing that out. And I mean, there it's gonna be tough for them to suppress it. You can't stop an idea. That's the whole thought. I came here, no, I'm sorry. I came here to disrupt the status quo. The status quo has to be disrupted in this country. This country's going to shit right now. And just as far as back to, you know, media, I'm trying to keep it on media. Yeah, sure. um, a very bad man named Richard Nixon was once our president. And he got outed by a bunch of different sources to Woodward and Bernstein. And if it weren't for those two men coming out and shouting from the rooftops that our president is corrupt as fuck, who knows what would have happened after that. And so there are instances where the media is important, and those are two men who were told, basically, you're putting your lives at risk if you continue with this. The federal government will do something to you if you continue going after the President of the United States. And, and they kept pushing. And I know there's some journalists out there, because there was a small revolt at the New York Times recently, because they were being censored. The writers didn't like that, and the writers said, fuck you. 
So just remember that not all of the news media is out to get us, although right. much of it is. <laughs> but there are those journalists out there that right. do care about us. And when they put out the message, there are very respected journalists who have very big readerships. And they earned those readerships for telling it like it is, being honest journalists. And I think we have to, you know, keep in mind those people before we attack a group as large and vast as the media. Supposedly, there's politicians who have been working for us this whole time. I'm not buying that, but maybe. Yeah, there could be. I'm still not going to support them. <laughs> but you're saying the same thing. I mean, if you're going to say that about media, it's got to be the same thing about every aspect. The difference like is politics. those media people choose to be whistleblowers anyway, even to great personal harm. Our government has yet to choose to really be whistleblowers. Even Ron Paul, who claims that he's a whistleblower, I'm not hearing about who's getting bribes, and I know he knows. Well, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> nope. I'm just. It's important to keep a strong media in what we call a democracy here. If we had a direct democracy the way we do things, a strong media is not as important because your, your citizenry is... Everything is open. You need to vote on things. In this country, we needed a strong media to keep people informed about what was going on, but our media went to shit, so our people aren't as informed as they need to be about our government. Not everybody can be in Washington, D.C. to monitor the, the House and all this stuff. I think... I know it's just a lot of conversations going on, which is good, but I think you made such a good point. We need to connect to some of these people that really are doing good and trying hard. And that's how we, I think, can reach more people. The only thing is, even with the, the politicians who are trying, are you talking about politicians or journalists? Journalists, whatever. Which I don't think it should matter who they are. That's, it's you know, just because as far as politicians goes, they're still working within this system that's so negative towards so many different things. Like, it's... You know, even McDonald's has their McDonald's house charity, you know, just because you do some good doesn't mean you're good. I'm sure Walmart gives plenty of money to charity to try and avoid taxes, you know? So sometimes you only do these good things to try and, you know, get your constituents to keep voting for you. If you're doing good things for the wrong reason, do they still count? Or even when McDonald's says, hey, every dollar of our Big Mac goes to this charity. <coughs> Why is every dollar of that Big Mac going to the charity? Because they're charging you an extra dollar. Also, I mean, we have to think about how our corporations control us in that vein with the media also. McDonald's and their McDonald's House charity and come buy these McNuggets for this price and we have the best fries in the world. I just saw a great one today, actually. First time I saw this commercial, a uh, potato farmer from McDonald's takes a bite out of his own potato and says they're good now. Wait till they become McDonald's fries. I mean, like, they're... Even McDonald's is trying to like, hey, we're we're small, we're small market too. We're buying off this potato guy. When I'm sure they filmed that in some, you know, stage, soundstage somewhere in LA. And all the big corporations are doing that with this faux we're going green stuff. Like, yeah, the FDA is so loose about what this green thing means <laughs> that some actual people who do go green and do go organic won't put organic and green tags on their stuff because organic and green doesn't necessarily mean that. What? Being an expert, you know, but having experience in it, how how do we use some of the stuff that they use, like advertising or or messaging, a in order of money. in order for us to to maybe to help us out? I mean, someone brought a good point up. This this gentleman here, what's your name again? Frank. Frank about how different occupies are spreading, you know, and that's I think that's the direction we're, we've all been talking about for a long time, but. Like, as far as like messaging and advertising and whatnot, I mean, I, is it, what, what, what can we do that's, um, media's doing that we could do? And, and this isn't necessarily directly media tied, but it can be, is there've been um, Occupy papers popping up. There's, um, Occupy. Th there's Occupy, uh, Occupy Los Angeles Times. There's the Portland Occupy Occupier. Um, I have another one from, uh, from Denver that their UC is putting out. The Occupy uh, Wall Street. Yeah, the Occupy Wall Street Journal, and it, not necessarily to, to like advertise, but you know, mention the local stores because there's getting there's a lot of the local support from small businesses that are struggling just as much as anybody else because they're locally owned and operated, and you you know you support those businesses if you want to bring it back, then bring it back. You know, don't go to McDonald's because it's cheap. You know, it, it might cost a little more, but. If you start contributing to local businesses, then that's how you build your local economy. And that's how you get, you know, advertising. If they want to advertise in the occupier, they know they're, you know, a friendly business. And then you get support from people that support the movement. 
I think, just like to point out, we do have a magazine here. <laughs> I've yet to be able to make it to one of the meetings, but we have print for two now, I think, right? Do we have two? Or one? Is that Charlie's? There's one or two copies of an Occupy magazine from Occupy Phoenix. I came out here, actually, because I was still working in the journalism field at the time, like, wanting to do a print journalism, like a print newspaper, but, dude, those things cost so much money. <laughs> But yeah, that's the thing about advertising is the reason why the corporations and the media are so good at getting the message out is because they have a boatload of money to do it. We don't have a boatload of money. I mean, we make up red slogans. We have red slogans. The best we can do is flyer. And I think we don't flyer as much as we And, you know, handing them out, and this is personally speaking, like, that's how I feel. You know, you hand a flyer to somebody, most times like, they, they feel almost offended as they walk by, crumble that thing up and throw it away. I think leaving them in like restaurants, coffee shops, head shops, skate shops, that's the way to go as far as trying to get our message out. That's how they did it, you know, before the first day. They were just leaving stickers and posters everywhere. What, what we are just, you, uh, spread the literature. Yeah. We're just sharing knowledge, sharing literature with people. Yeah, exactly. And it, it could be it could be individualized in a way too. And that's uh, one of the things uh, Occupy <laughs> Seattle's talking about is actually doing uh, like mobile teachings and marches on a weekly basis, not necessarily yelling the slogans, yelling take down the 1%, but yelling about what's going on, yelling about the, the, the local corruption, spreading the news and information. You guys could do mobile marches from, you know, uh, friendly shop to friendly shop, you know. These are supporters of Occupy. You know, you spread the word to people that don't necessarily go seek it out on their own. You have uh, like boards and posters with bullet points on what the, the occupation is about, about why you should support local businesses, why you should go organic, why you should buy you know, things made in the U.S. You, you have that information for people and you, you spread it to them always possible. It doesn't always have to be a flyer. It doesn't just have to go out on Twitter. It doesn't have to go in a post on the Facebook. You can do it, you know on a piece of paper and walk around with it showing people and when they ask you what you're talking about you can tell them there are ways to engage people directly and i think that's one of what i've been hearing is you know a lot of these people taking the next step direct action you know when people come to you uh you know with a, a home home getting foreclosed on you know you send occupiers down there and you know you wait and you you just stand there so that they can't get them out you know you use uh, foreclosed homes as uh, shelter. You use homes getting foreclosed as bail money. Let them fight, you know, the bail bondsman for the deed to that house. You know, there, there's other ways to, to go about it. There's other ways to spread information. And, and there's a lot of direct action that, that can be, you know, very beneficial. There's that saying, it's like the best media or the best something is word of mouth. Best advertisement is word of mouth. I think it still stands true. That's what we're doing here. That's what you're saying. I mean, you're saying I think that this is this. Is, I mean, this just strengthens, I think, our like mind and the way we can, because you can see <laughs> physically see yeah. the words. I, I think that's the best kind of media, honestly, because I mean, you can do stuff on the internet, you can do stuff in print, but when you go out and take the time to talk to people, it really blows their mind because people don't talk anymore. They sit there behind the TV, they text each other, but taking the time to talk to somebody to tell them what it's about when you know a lot of people support this movement but they're not down here because they don't quite understand why so if you walk around with a sign you know you take an hour or two out of your day to go around with the sign so that people have to ask you what's going on and, and it, even if they don't ask you it's on your sign they can read it for themselves yeah the first month we were down here i had a sign in my bag that said i'm occupying phoenix ask me why and it started some great conversations i should probably print a new one we got like ripped off but um, I'd highly recommend that buttons t-shirts whatever because um, I think you know I that, wore it to work that I wore would be a it, good t-shirt yeah that would and, be and it, it started conversations because then people were like alright why yeah, the, the, you know. there's a good like national campaign campaign I am occupied ask me why I'd also like to point out to use the media against itself uh, the sun's over there they play right there you can see the big old bright side they play today they uh playing Cleveland, I believe. They, yes. Yeah, Cleveland sucks. Let's let's get a game that somebody might actually be watching. Um, we can go right in there behind like where they're kind of doing the game announcing and Mike check the shit out of it. <laughs> it's, it's outdoors. It's sitting right there. Oh, are you talking about when they do the post game and pre game? I know, dude. That's a perfect place to hold a sign. We all go over there with signs and Mike check it. Ah. Not, honestly, because this is somewhat decent chance of arrest. I'd say to save that one for a good game because nobody's watching. Yeah. L.A. <laughs> L.A. Name a Cleveland Cavalier. Anybody. Go. 
Booby Gibson. Alright, one. Just one. Booby Gibson, Daniel Gibson. I don't even know who they have anymore. But, yeah, so that's media. That, but that's, media is important to this, democ- this supposed democracy. Because that's what's supposed to give us the good word. That's what we're supposed to vote on. Our media is supposed to let us know what's going on. And for the most part, the biggest ones out there really aren't. They're letting us know what they think is going on and what they want us to think is going on. I, I told a guy from ABC, we had a ABC 15 today, went and called him. And one of the things I said was, check our website. You know, look what we're doing, you know? I don't think they do, you know? They're like expecting us to, to tell them. And it's not against him, it's just, you know, what are you guys doing? Well, we're, we're trying. We're well, trying to tell them. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like behind, the press this, <laughs> behind the scenes and like the poker stuff, they just, they wing it. Like, they do, that's how sports journalism is. They kind of wing it. I know some friends that do it. The news, they just wing it, you know? They are before the 5 is. o'clock. Yeah, they, and people don't realize that, though. They're just out there. Oh, this is live. I mean, they don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, what somebody's going to say. But I turn think, it into what they want it to be, which is, you know, what, what we're doing. Sorry, real quick. But I think it was good that I talked to him because you did get that personal connection. He got to hear like more emotion than just words on a website you got to hear like oh i'm so you know we're gonna do this tomorrow and you know and i think he like felt it more than if he was just reading it i don't know that's kind of what we're talking about the personal connection between people when you talk i think that's why it's so important because you know like he could have read that on the website but then he would have reported it framed it the way he wanted and like oh yeah occupy is doing uh a protest of, you know, Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Of course they would. They're occupying. Blah, blah, blah. And gone on with his, his speech or his, his report. But if you sit there and you talk to him and you give him the context, no, we're doing this because of his policies, because he's blatantly racist, because yeah. he's whatever, you know? Costing county money. Yeah, because, because we're doing of it all of what these he's things. doing, not because of who he is. Yeah. And, Stop and, oppressing Joe Arpaio's constitutional right. <laughs> no we made, we made was, it feel that, bad. Was that the pro Arpaio? No, Arpaio said that. Oh, that's what he said. No, it's civil rights. Oh, it's civil rights. They're, they're, they're abusing. Oh, God. But that, that's what it is. I mean, if you talk to people, you can explain these things to them. And I suppose it is a constitutional right to be racist, right? It's not illegal to lie. <laughs> Free speech. It's, it's, it's got to be illegal somewhere to hurt yeah, people. It, it, <laughs> it's illegal to use your beliefs. Like, well, obviously. <laughs> But there's our media at play again. Honestly, before I moved here to Maricopa County, I lived in I lived in New Jersey, and you would think Sheriff Joe is kind of like this is tough lawman. It was kind of funny the way they they show Tent City and the pink underwear and all. And then you get here and you see what this guy's actually about, and he's a piece of shit. That's your media at work. People outside of this area, some know Joe, some don't know Joe, and some know Joe the way I knew Joe. It's America's toughest sheriff sheriff show. America's yeah. toughest sheriff, exactly. That's how he brands. That's what it is. It's branding. It's because branding. He, it's the media. Yeah. <laughs> and he uses it. Yeah. The reason you guys can't, you can't all like occupy yeah, media. There the, you go. The way that I know that Occupy has grown a lot is when like there's a human story that people will be like, like a lot of the violence upon Occupiers is that's a human story that you see and then you Scottle, feel for them. Scottle essence. Which is, you know, which is how you know Joe said. You know, he's saying like this is a human story of how I'm protecting you, however skewed it may be. So you know, you feel a certain way about him, like oh, he's helping me out. And it's like, well, yeah. yeah, but it's super skewed. So that I mean, I think that's our biggest strength is that our human story is true. Which is why I stress the importance of citizen journalism to the occupation. If you're the one holding the camera or the cell phone or the iPad or the netbook or the whatever if you're the one filming it you're the one writing it it's your opinion it's it's your slant on it it's your skew if you want to be completely objection object the hell is that objective objective i'm sorry i'm uh, objective. Uh, yeah, objectionable uh if you want to be completely <laughs> objective that's your choice but if you're the one telling the story you're the one in control of the story which is why everybody there are forums out there man there's ways to get your story out whether you're tweeting Facebooking, Tumblring, whatever. Uh, if you guys want to get We're down with, with our website, Occupy Uprising, you know, we want volunteers to write for our website. Occupy Phoenix, I'm sure they can do some content. Like, there's ways. To start your own website, start your own webpage, and start blogs. Get Seriously, the story. No, out. WordPress.org. Huh? 
Seriousnote.wordpress.com. There you go. This one's coming. There's so many. What? See, I think that's also sometimes. My citizen journalism just died. One question. Oh, hey. Occupied. If you stand up against the government, aren't you an occupier? Sure. Is that a sure? I don't know. No, not necessarily because there's many Nazis who would stand up against the government yeah. who wouldn't want anything to do with us. That's always the example, but it's a good one. Did he? Um, the Aryan Nation or something like that actually endorse Occupy? <laughs> the NSM came out here, and by the way, if you want to visit JT Ready, everybody, if you want, I say this all the time, AutoZone and Gilbert, go say what's up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he works at Nottos on Gilbert, and me and Ting Ting might have driven by it the other day. <laughs> go find out. We got to find out where JT Reddy's at. I want to go in with the Yamaka, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about your buddy, Joe! Huh. That's another thing, though. Like, Nazis, for instance, just to bring it back to media. I personally, like, Nazis kind of seem like these fledgling clowns of a group, like, at this point. Like, yes, they spew out hate speech and do all that, but they're kind of like jesters. Like, yeah, they're stupid Nazis. Who cares? Yo, those guys are serious, man. They really want to get rid of anyone who's different from them, and they really carry huge guns. <laughs> back in the day, they used propaganda. But... Propaganda, something I can't believe I didn't mention yet. Um, the American propaganda machine is amazing, people. I compared George Washington to Adolf Hitler on my Facebook the other day. And I mean, ah. if you kind of think about it, he presided over the systematic, uh, the systematic annihilation of a race. He did. He was perfect. Several distinct races. There you go. And, and sure. it's our propaganda machine that rises him up to being our great general. He's George Washington, the father of this country. Our propaganda was better. Who knew what he really looked like at the time? We only know what they say he looked at at the time. And so little survived from then that, I mean, I'm sure that not much of like the, what would be liberal media back then, you know, the people against Washington. What did they think about Washington, you know? You never hear that. The same with Christopher Columbus. <laughs> I seen he seemed like he's a piece of shit. Going well, over in a boat, trying to buy stuff and then sell it for profit. And that's all he's doing. I mean, it's not somebody that's systematically like killing cool. people that's on the crazy. way. <laughs> but that's like our schools have been infiltrated by our media because we're learning yeah. the way that they want us to learn. Yep. All of our leaders, all of our framers, all these great men, like they don't teach nearly enough about Lincoln. And the fact that yep. Barack Obama was up there, you know, yeah, talking totally all that Lincoln, Lincoln nonsense man. was kind of like, whoa, because Lincoln is like the most racist person. One, like many people who worked <laughs> with him, I, don't, I think it was the chief of staff in the White House at the time said, Abe was the most racist man I know. And, I mean, if everybody was racist back then and some guy could peg the president to be the most racist of them all, that's a problem. <laughs> and yet he helped abolish it. But he didn't care about actually abolishing slavery. He cared about keeping the union together. And honestly, that was more of a slight to the South because yeah. slavery was kind of a, abolishing itself. It wasn't cost effective anymore, and they were wasting millions of dollars trying to oppress people. See what I just did? Farted? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just spewed out what I was told. Oh, see, exactly. Like our our teachers go to great lengths to make sure we don't learn properly, and part of that is because the media doesn't want to teach us properly. Well, but um, I mean, about a lot of it is because they, they haven't learn. learned properly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. They're yeah. spouting out what they heard, and it goes on and on and on. And lies. My teacher told telephone. me should be required reading for every yep. American student and, at age fourteen. Uh, uh, Lies people's true. history, people's history of uh, yes. of the United States. Voices from a people's history, even more so, because those are the direct source materials. Which I'm reading right now, and the book is amazing. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and it's not like because I'm all for teachers, and like I I understand a lot of them, you know, may have their own slant. A lot of them, you know, kind of fuck it up, but it's systematic because the system has been rigged for these teachers to fail in teaching these students and then the students as a result fail and then become teachers who you know just dumb down the system even more it's a systematic annihilation of actual intellectualism in our country and you look at the smart kids in school and who, who are the most bullied who are the most you know oppressed in, in the schools it's the kids who actually learn and, and the kids who are intelligent because nobody wants to be friends with the smart kid because you know smart kids are lame and that's the way our system has been rigged because you want to be a jock, or a movie star, or a dancer, or whatever else. You don't want to be a contributing member of society. You want to be, you know, part of the 1%.
all of that ties back into our media feeding us what they want us to see. They want us to want that life. But as far as you said about supporting our teachers, I support the idea of teachers, but I think a lot of teachers become teachers. I mean, I meet kids all the time. It's like, I didn't really know what to do in college, so I became a teacher. Or other things like that. And I mean, I'm sure a lot of teachers did teachers get out there. Because teachers don't get paid. Exactly. Well, well no. I don't think you, a lot of people want yeah. to teach because it's a job to pay the rent. And that's yeah. another reason yeah. why I, I don't, su I support, I support schools. I don't support our schools. We need to revamp our school systems and rethink what we want in a teacher. Because I, I, I think it's blatantly obvious that the way America views a school system is wrong. And the way our teachers are teaching it, regardless of if it's the school system telling you to teach it that way, the federal <coughs> government telling you to teach it that way, it's not being done the right way. Which is why our schools are so terrible compared to the rest of the country, the rest of the world. Well, the people uh, that are running the schools are, I mean, they're sounds, old men. You know, old, they're white old people. <laughs> they're, they're way oh, behind whatever you know they should be teaching. So far behind that just drags everything down. I think a lot of it's you know everybody gets taught the same thing, so we all go about attacking problems the same way. And anybody that doesn't do that is you know ostracized, like you're saying. We have this group think like, oh yeah, that's that's how it is. Let's go from there. And it's like, is that really how it is? Because there's you know, no discussion. There's no discussion. We we go forward from a point of we all agree, and then we don't look back and say, why do we all agree on um, whatever? There's a, B, no C, or D. Pick one. So they don't tell you a. why, but they tell you that that's the right one. So that's what you pick, and that's how you pass. Many <laughs> times when I was in high school, I saw the kids who asked the most questions get in trouble. Yep. Like, I saw a lot of kids who were sort of a troublemaker. When they would ask something that they legitimately didn't understand, the teacher always assumed that the kid was being a jerk or something. Mm -hmm. They don't want to answer your questions. They don't want you asking questions. They want to read off their lesson plan and go home at the end of the day. Or at least that, I mean, I of course, don't let me bash on teachers. Like I had teachers I loved, and they were the ones who didn't read the lesson plan and you know really made it a discussion. There's a reason the first book of Book Club was 1984. Uh, I loved the teacher that taught me that book, and when I was the one who sort of stood up and said, let's do a book club, that's what I remembered, and so that's why. That was for uh, Jeannie McVeary from Teaneck High School. She was a great English teacher there. And I just think all teachers need to be able to really touch their students and really affect their <laughs> students. Careful with that. <laughs> and, uh, and, Did he touch you? And just, I guess, this back to church, media, so though, like, all of our people in the media, they're <laughs> products of our school systems. They do as they're told because our school system teaches them to do as they were told. So the reason why we might be getting, well, I'm going to call them bold-faced lies in the media, is because those people in the media are doing what their bosses tell them, who are doing what their bosses tell them, who are doing what their bosses tell them. Who are old white men. <laughs> lots of money. <laughs> old white men with lots of money kind of ruin everything in America. <laughs> It'd be funny if it wasn't so true, right? Thank you. That's Media and Democracy. I'll be here all week. I'll see you on Thursday. <laughs>